Okay, you see the individual seated right there in the black t-shirt? That's Matthew Meineke. He's in Seattle at a park. He happens to be reading from the Bible, which is his right to do, okay? Even if everybody else is uh, getting their, um, you know, doing their gay pride thing. It was a gay pride event. Well, things went downhill fast, and ultimately, that man is arrested. Matthew Meineke joins us right now. He is a preacher with something called Grace Team Seattle. He also has a roof cleaning business that he opened three years ago. Matthew, yes. uh, welcome to Newsmax. How are you? Good. It's good to see you. Thank you for having me on. You bet. Hey, first of all, uh, the, we're, that event, uh, was it an official gay pride event? Was it just a, you know, a casual get together? What was happening there? Well, with Seattle, they have gay pride every weekend during, I mean, there's some kind of an event always happening with, with the homosexual events in, in Seattle. So all right. this so, is the official event. I understand you're reading from the Bible at the event. Now, let me just ask you this. Actually, first, was there a particular passage you were reading from the Bible or just anything in general? Yeah, at the time, I was actually reading through the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Matthew chapter 5 through 7. And then I actually finished that and I started reading uh, Matthew chapter 8 and halfway through chapter 9, I got arrested. Okay. Now, I'm a believer and I read the Bible. Let me just ask you. And by the way, you have a right to do what you did. And I think, uh, well, I'll get to that in a moment. What was your intent? Well, my intent was to go out and read the word because I believe in the power of the word of God. And the word of God has power. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And so I believe in, this, in the spoken word of God. When you speak God's word to the people, faith comes by hearing so when you hear the word of God, the faith is actually built up in people and people can repent and believe the gospel. So I have hope. So I went out there to give the people hope. Well, people weren't feeling it and uh, they kind of got in your face. I think we have some video of that. They start yelling at you and screaming at you. Can we go ahead and roll that, please? This is uh, tell us a little bit about this moment. Well, I mean, this was closer to the beginning when I first started reading. And then after probably about two hours, there were 30 people there. Uh, we don't even have video of that. There were people spitting candy at me, pouring water on the Bible. Um, it became, you know, just a lot of obscenities getting yelled at me. It was just, you know, it was quite a stir. It was right. quite a stir. And then the cops show up, and this is what takes us by surprise. They wind yes. up arresting you. Turn the volume up, please, and let's take this from the top, if you don't mind, before the cuffs go on. Here they are. But they have a conversation with you first. Let's go ahead yeah. and take that, please, from the top. You pose for public safety by remaining here. It can be mitigated if you leave. You last chance. I don't want to leave because I'm not in danger. I'm not in danger. It's time for urgent. I'm switching the public Right, so they arrested you because they could not guarantee your safety, but shouldn't they have been protecting you? It's kind of interesting. Well, they, <laughs> they, you weren't committing a crime necessarily. They said, however, right. they were going to arrest you anyway. Yeah, so they said you're causing a public safety threat, and all I was doing the entire time was reading the Bible. I said, I'm not going to leave. I haven't done anything wrong. I haven't broken any municipal codes. I haven't broken any statutes. I haven't done anything. I wasn't even using a sound system. I well, said I've just been reading the Bible. You were. Um, t I understand you were charged with obstruction. You had a court yeah. hearing on on Tuesday. How did that go? What happened? Well, they. they it looks like they, they have up to two years. They haven't dropped the charges officially. They have up to two years to charge me with the crime. I'm actually hoping that they just drop the charges. Um, I actually want a, an official letter of apology from the chief of police, Adrian Diaz, for this. Um, I, I just I feel like this is just um, a, a major double standard in Seattle, major double standard. Now, on Friday, two days before this, you yes. were harassed and also, I believe, arrested uh, yes. in a similar circumstance. It was a pro-choice protest. We have some pictures of this. What were you doing there and what happened, please? So I was reading the Bible there and I was actually reading through the book of John. 
and we were at this uh, outside the federal building in Seattle, reading through the Book of John, and the Bible was actually getting ripped up. They were actually ripping pages out, uh, the yelling obscenities, telling me I had to leave. This was not the police, of course; these were the, the protesters. But then at the same thing, police show up. They say that uh, you must leave, otherwise you're going to be arrested. I said, I haven't done anything wrong. Uh, I, I'm not going to leave. I'm, I'm on a public place. I mean, I've, I haven't done anything, you know, illegal. I've just been reading my Bible. So same thing. No sound amplification. You know, no, it wasn't a nuisance. It wasn't a violation of any statutes. I was just reading the Bible. So... A couple of things here. Number one, uh, I am also a believer, and uh, I have uh, respect for what you did. At the same time, though, I just want to ask you, you know, when you're talking about your faith, sometimes maybe going to a crowded event with a lot of people, you know, taking somebody one-on-one and sharing your faith might be more effective or could be arguably more effective. What I'm trying to do here, look— you're not looking for trouble, or are you? No, not looking for trouble at all. We we go and speak unto the people all the words of this life. You know, Jesus said, proclaim what you hear, what I tell you in closets on the house stops. And so we, we actually go to multiple places. It's not just these protests. We go to the games. Uh, we go to the Seahawks games, Mariner games, Sounders games. I mean, we're not looking for trouble. It's just the word of God is offensive. And, and people don't want to hear it, and they get upset. So, so let me ask you this. I, um, Christ is very real in my life, but I did not, uh, it didn't happen where somebody, you know, I'm walking down the sidewalk and somebody was just reading the word. I had conversations with people, multiple people, and, and then I was introduced to the word. Do you think mm-hmm. it works? And, and it, 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 I, I accept that. Well, tell me more about how this works. It does work, correct? You think? It does work. The just Word on... of God is power. Yes. The Word of God is power. We've actually done this in, in homeless camps in Seattle. People have asked for prayer. They've even prayed for salvation with us. So this does work. Um, I think a lot of people have the attitude. They don't have the faith to really go and proclaim uh, the Word of God and trust in the power of the Word of God and, and let the Word speak for itself. And I think if more people did that, I think the church would be stronger. Actually, I do. I believe people's faith would be stronger, and I believe that more would be accomplished for the kingdom of God. Matthew Meineke, thank you very much. Uh, Please be safe. I would hate for you to get hurt in any of this, but this is your right, and uh, uh, I'm impressed, actually. But be careful, okay? Yes, we're going to. God, God will be with us. If you want to follow uh, the Seattle preacher at Matt Team Jesus, Matt two T's Team Jesus. Um, thank you, sir, very very much. All the best. Yes, thank you for having me on. You bet. You bet. We'll be right back. <laughs> 